Hey everyone, welcome back to the new video. Today we'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Improving Cross-Lingual Text Classification with Zero-Shot Instance Weighing. This is from researchers from Yale University and IBM Research. So at very high level, the paper essentially introduces a concept of instance weighing, where they give weight to each instance in a text classification setting for solving the problem across multiple languages and that too under the zero-shot setting. So what this exactly means is, Let's say you have a source language S and you have a target language T and let's consider the source language to be English and target language, let's say to be Hindi. And let's say the task is to do sentiment classification, which means given a sentence, you want to either classify it as positive, negative or neutral. But the constraint that we have is like, we don't have any of the labeled data for this language. We just have sentences that you want to classify, but we don't have any ground truth data for us to train any explicit model for this setting. But what do we have is many English sentences and also their ground truth label data. So now the question is, can we train a model on English language and then use it for predicting the sentences for Hindi language as well? So this is the entire problem that we are trying to solve. So to tackle the situation and train the model effectively, authors introduce instance weighing, where they give weight to each of the instance in the source sentence based on their similarity to the target language. So the intuition is, if there's a lot of difference between sentences from the source language and target language, then that sentence is essentially not representative. Rather on the other side, if there is a group of sentences that really match and have high similarity with the source language, then the chances of having some language level common features increases. So that's the idea that they want to grab on and accordingly weight each of the instance while we train this model. So that's in crux the entire idea of the paper. And that's what they have written in the abstract. That the cross-lingual text classification, CLTC, is a challenging task made even harder still due to lack of labeled data in the low resource languages. In this paper, we propose a zero-shot instance weighing, a general model agnostic zero-shot learning framework for improving the cross-lingual text classification by leveraging the source instance weights. So that's exactly what we have discussed. So let's move forward and see the exact architecture and all the base components that it uses. So this figure one, they introduce the CLTC framework. So if you see this, here XS is nothing but the source input, which is the source language and XT is nothing but the target language. So as we said, let's consider XS to be English and XT to be Hindi. Then you have the pre-trained model that gives you a hidden representation for those set of sentences for both source input and target input. Now the authors experimented with two models, which was XLM Roberta and the multilingual BERT. But again, the possibilities are endless in terms of having and plugging any multilingual model over here. Now, once you have the hidden representation for both of them, let's consider the mini batch size was four. So that's what we represent over here. And since, as we said, like we are working under a cross-lingual zero short setting. So cross-lingual has already happened because it's from English to Hindi. And considering zero short, we just have access to YS, which is the actual label for this source, is to use this labeled set and do the prediction for the target input and get the YT for that. Now this task layer, what you see is again dependent on the kind of task you're training on. For example, if you're working on a classification problem, then this task layer could be just a fully connected layer. Or let's say if you're now working on name entity recognition, then you need to have a many to many kind of architecture because you need to make prediction for every word in the input sentence. So for now, let's consider we are working on sentiment classification. So from the pre-trained model, you get the CLS embedding vector, which is nothing but the entire representation for the input sentence. And same as with HT. Now the instance wing module, what you see is the core idea that helps us do the zero shot cross lingual training. Now the intuition behind instance wing, as the word itself suggests, is to give weight to every instance from the source input that kind of hints towards the importance of that input while training this network. And the way you calculate is to calculate the similarity between the embedding representation of every source input to the average similarity of it with the representation of every target input. And in this paper, they choose a mini batch size of M with which they calculate this average similarity. And ideally you should be doing it with the entire target input, but that again is not computationally efficient. So this is again one of the approximations. So if the difference between the source instance and the target language is small, which means the source input share a lot of common properties with the target language, which hints us that the weight for this instance should be high. Because again, since we don't have any annotated data with the target input, we need to rely on instances that share common properties with the target language for fine tuning the task layer and the pre-trained model layer. So think of this as this, 
let's say there were four samples that you had and let's say the loss that we get for each of them is almost similar but let's say this has the higher similarity with the target language so we give this weight let's say w1 and rest everything is given w2 to w4 where w1 to w4 is let's say close to zero and this is close to two for example now while calculating the average loss and then doing the back propagation the overall loss would still be really high because of this two factor which is the signal that model takes and in the next iteration tries to push this value even smaller so that when multiplied by two the average loss that you get over here is less than the previous iteration so yeah that way the impact that this example has while training the model is most so that's the intuition to how instance weighing exactly works and this is exactly what they have written over here now if you see the gradient descent equation we know like this is the parameter that we want to train and update this is the learning rate k is the batch size f of this is the loss function this is the actual label and g theta xi is the prediction that our model makes for the input sample xi and this is the partial derivative of this loss that we take with respect to the parameter theta so this is a typical equation that everybody knows but with instance weighing we talked about having an extra term which is w that happens to be with every k so this is the updated equation rest everything is same but this is what you have with respect to every instance in the mini batch and as i said wi is nothing but the similarity score that they calculate for every source instance hi with every instance in the batch size of d in the target input which is nothing but a cosine similarity where we have a plus one term as well so which makes it a range from 0.5 to 1 so when the cosine similarity is zero which means the source input doesn't match at all with any of the with the target input then you give a least score of 0.5 and if it's a hundred percent match then you do a one plus one by two which is one so this is the range we operate for w so yeah that's about this paper i guess i'll meet you in the next one bye bye and take care